Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Well, update 9.1 has finally arrived. And it, it's a bit of a different update. It's more of a patch because you're downloading the stuff from the game rather than going to the app stores. And now we've had a real opportunity, however, to look at what the tier 10 balance changes actually mean to the game overall. Yeah, we had an open test, and we've had a shed load of videos prior to 9.1 actually being released. And in quite a few of those videos, well, opinion pieces, there was a tone of doom and gloom. But is that really the case? Have wargaming gone too far? Has TRX now been, well, ruined? Well, I, personally, I don't think so. Not by a long shot. There have been far too many nerfs, buffs, and balance changes, as Wargaming puts it, to go through an entire list or to go through each and every tank, but there are quite a few notable Tier X tanks that have benefited, one way or the other, from the 9.1 balancing exercise. So let's start at the ones that have caused you know, the greatest of uh, contention, the AOX 50B and the FV4005. Now, in both cases, these tanks have received an additional shell, turning them from a three-shell autoloader to that of a four-shell autoloader. But has that relegated these tanks to a mere bit part in the battles going forward? Well, the simple answer is no, not really. Yes, they now have longer reloads, but that's actually compensated by the additional shell, to be fair. Yes, both tanks need a slight adjustment to their playstyle because of the additional reload time. That doesn't mean they're uh, any less effective or devastating once you get used to that reload. I rolled out in both tanks last night on stream and once I adapted my game to take into account the changes, I really did have a shed load of fun. I found neither tankers on duty suffered, not really. Yes, the 50B isn't the beast it once was, but it's still a beast. And it's still able to churn out an average damage of approximately 2,500 in the hands of an average player. Meaning, a very good player will still be hitting close to 4K. The 4005 is now more like a TD. Well, I think it is. I used to play the 405 like a 50B. But with the additional shell, I don't think that's really possible anymore. It really does need to have that safety blanket during that long reload. Nevertheless, I still managed to knock out a shed load of hurt. And again, an average player is more than capable of hitting 2,500 plus damage in this tank and be a menace to society. But does this mean we need to adapt our previous playstyles? Well, to an extent, on these tanks, yes, it does, because you've now got to take into account that additional shell and that additional reload time. But it's minimal, and once you've got used to that, then I see no overall detriment to the overall tanks, if I'm being honest. Yes, we may not like to change our well-tried-out playstyles on such tanks, but change isn't necessarily a bad thing overall. Personally, I'm liking the FV4005. I've always liked the FV4005, and I still do. And I'm still liking the 50B, although the latter will take some more getting used to, the new playstyle, before I can truly say whether it's still the best tier 10 heavy out there. Especially when one considers some of the other changes hitting some of the other tier X heavies, such as the T57 heavy, a tank that we're gonna look at now. Moving on to the T57 Heavy, now during the open test I really wasn't feeling it and there has been some concerns from the community that the changes on this tank would probably hurt it, even though they look like they should benefit it. But if that's the case then I certainly haven't felt it. Now I found the T57 changes have brought about a massive benefit to this tank. Now this is a tank I've always liked and I've long argued that it's equally as dominant as the 50B. Now the 57 Heavy seems to be given a slight boost and in the games that I played I found the tank still remains a massive beast, more than capable of churning out 3000 average damage and inflicting devastating pain upon the enemy. 
The overall play style of the 57 Heavy hasn't really changed. And in a recent video I put out about playing tier 10 auto loading heavies, I still found the overall gameplay to be exactly as it was prior to 9.1. Yes, you now benefit from additional armor on the front and the decreased magazine reload time. But these changes, lovely buffs as they are, haven't really altered the overall characteristics of the tank, not as such. Well, not to the average player. Obviously, those super duper, super duper unicorns out there will make massive use of the enhanced armor profile, decreased reload time, and the additional 50 hit points. But for the vast majority of us, the tank will only seem to have a minor improvement. It's certainly not broken or OP, it's just a very nice auto loading heavy. Something that it has always been, it's never been anything other than that. So it's lovely that it's got these buffs. The fact of the matter is, it's always been a great tank. It's now cementing that more realistically. Has it overtaken the 50B? That's debatable. Maybe to the top echelon of the player base, it probably has, but to mere mortals like me, no. It'll still be the 57 Heavy, and it'll still be as good as the 50B. Thing is, there are some tanks that really have apparently received a massive benefit. And one tank is that of the TVP. Now the TVP has always been a tricky tank to play, what with its light armor and very long reload. The thing is, the reload during 9.1 has actually gone up, not down, for the overall magazine. Okay, there's a slight decrease in the inter-shell reload, but the overall magazine has gone up. I personally have always found the TVP to be a tank that is more than capable of dishing out a lot of pain, preferring it to that of the other autoloading medium, the Progetto. Not everyone, however, liked the TVP, and it's rather unique playstyle. Now, when this tank first came out, I found it to be a monster at hurting the enemy, and as long as you were able to run to cover during that reload, it was a real menace. 9.1 hasn't really changed anything, in my opinion. It's still a monster, and it's still more than capable of knocking out two and a half to three thousand average damage in the average hand in the average player's hands. The overall playstyle of the tank hasn't been affected. It still requires that safe place to reload, followed by the ability to pop out and rain down lots of red hot AP shells on unsuspecting enemies. Personally, I'm liking the TVP now more than before, despite the fact that, on the face of it, the TVP was nerfed rather than buffed. The thing is, the TVP has always been what I term a finesse tank, requiring some skill to play well, and that hasn't actually changed one little bit. It will still be able to get you into a world of pain if played incorrectly, but if you're able to play this tank well, it will certainly bring a huge smile to your face as you watch the enemy hit points just disappear in front of your eyes. And the TVP has always had the ability to do that. Nothing has really changed. Not really. So when you look at it on paper, it's like, oh my god, it's been nerfed. It actually hasn't. It's, it's not been changed. It still plays very much the same way as it used to play. And you've just got to be very careful with this tank because it doesn't have the best armor, it does have a long reload, but it really will bring a massive smile on your face if you can play it well. And I love this tank, I've always loved this tank, and that's all I have to say on that. Another tank that has created a lot of hot debate is that of the Concept 1B. Now I've always liked the Concept 1B, and some out there has expressed massive concerns that the 1B will unduly suffer and will end up being a shadow of its former self. I mean, I've heard some terms that it's going to be a trash tank. Yet this is something that I myself have yet to experience, and I played this tank after 9.1. Yeah, the 1B has had some armor trimmed off the upper glacius plate, and it's received a slightly longer reload. But the tank, in my view, is still every bit as nasty hauled down as it ever was. The turret is still a real royal pain in the backside to penetrate. Its mobility is still nice, and the overall characteristics of the tank, namely that it's meant to be a haul down monster, haven't really changed one little bit. 
Okay, the upper front plate has had some armor thickness shaved off it. But hey, you really shouldn't be out there in the open most of this time in this thing. You should be either haul down or literally facing in your enemy. I found the One Beast playstyle hasn't really changed at all. It's still a bit of a beauty. And its overall playstyle is still very much the same as what it was before 9.1. As you can see here, I'm going to struggle here. This, 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 this Yag Tiger is going to pen my upper plate. And then, after having my brain fart, it's like, hey, I need to face hug you. And now he's not going to pen me. That hasn't changed. The one bee has always had this ability. It's always had a stonking turret. And that, that hasn't changed in 9.1. It's still got a stonking turret. I mean, he should have used HE on me and I would have dead. But look at this. I mean, I've just blocked over a thousand. And that's the thing about the one bee. So the one bee, notwithstanding, it's, st it's not a trash tank. Another tank that has really benefited is the long-suffering FV215B. Now this is a poor little tank that has been pulled from pillar to post by Wargaming with numerous nerfs, buffs, followed by more nerfs, followed by a bit of a buff, followed by a nerf. And finally in 9.1 it gets a little bit of needed love. What with the additional armour on the upper glacius plate, the additional 150 hit points, a better reload time and increased penetration on the HE. However, and I have to stress this, the overall characteristics of the tank itself haven't really changed. It's still going to be a tricky tank to play, and it will require skill to do so effectively. Yes, it's a haul down tank, but with its rear mounted turret, that's actually harder than it seems. The 215B has always been a tank that many newer players or less skilled players or even the average player base have struggled in. And that won't actually change, to be honest. Yes, those players will now find the tank a little less daunting, but nevertheless, it's still a darn difficult tank to play well. This is the reason why we have a special camo on it if you get a mastery, an ace mastery, that is. It was never a noob-friendly tank. It was never going to be. And the changes, lovely that they are, won't change that. It will still be a difficult tier 10 heavy to play that is rather unfriendly to the inexperienced. That doesn't mean it's a horrible tank. It doesn't mean it didn't need the changes because trust me, it did. I mean, this tank has been long suffering. It's always been a little gem in tier 10, but only a gem to those who can actually play it and play it well. And that was generally reserved for the best players in the game. Now, it's just a butte. It's brought back some element to the 215B that allows you to play it a little bit more effectively than previously. Still a difficult tank, don't get me wrong. Still going to cause a lot of problems for a lot of the newer players out there. But a, a beauty nevertheless, with some much needed changes. A tank that was always noob friendly however, although it did lose some of that uh, friendliness recently, is the IS-4. Now the IS-4 has benefited in 9.1 to kind of almost put it back on top in the list of noob friendly headers in the tier. Realistically the changes haven't really altered its overall playstyle. It's just reverted to the place it used to be. Okay, the driver's hatch has now received some much needed armour, along with the lower slope of the whole side. But the overall tank's playstyle and characteristics remain pretty much as is. The gun is still the same, the damage output is still the same, and the mobility is still the same. The thing is, the changes, subtle that they may be, will actually put the IS-4 back to whence it came prior to the nerf it received a few updates back. It will allow newer players an introduction to playing tier 10 heavies without dauntingness of the likes of the 215B or such. It's a lovely little tank. It's always been a lovely little tank. Will we see the IS-4 making a tour comeback? Well, that's really difficult to say and if I'm being honest it's pretty hard to see from my viewpoint. The reason I say that is because there are still better heavies in the tier that are probably more in line with Tormeta at this moment. But you never know. 
I mean, the changes are certainly not on the IS-4, and that is a good thing overall. Okay, I could go on and on about all the changes, but that would make for both a very long and very boring video, if I'm being honest. I could do individual videos on each and every tank that has had a change, but by the time I completed that, we'd no doubt be two more updates along the line. All I can say is that in the vast majority of the cases, especially in those tanks that I myself have played, 9.1 hasn't brought about any significant impact to the tank's prior abilities. Well, not to the average player. Some will now feel the tanks are easier to play. Some will feel that some of them are harder. But that's always been the case. I mean, let's not kid ourselves here. Tier 10 is the very pinnacle of the game. The tanks are not meant to be easy. Let's be frank. In almost all cases, I haven't seen any major change to the overall playability or playstyle of the tank. Although, no doubt, those few who play at the very top echelon of the game will. For the average player, the, change, the changes will go largely unnoticed. And that's not a slight on the average player, it's just a fact, guys. I mean, most average players do not consider overall dispersion of the tank, yet in most cases, it's the dispersion that's been tinkered with. Most of us will not see the benefit of additional 50 hit points or the slight weight increases, whereas the very top players will see those and put those changes to good use. For my part, I haven't, as of yet, experienced anything in tier X that gives me cause for concern or sends out a message that the tier is now somehow broken or unplayable. Admittedly, I'm not pitching this to the minority, the super duper unicorns out there, who undoubtedly do feel and see massive change. But the vast majority of the player base, us mere mortals, we're average and we just want to know how the tanks play. Well, in a word, they play pretty much as they used to prior to the update. Yeah, okay, the likes of the 50B and the FV4005 will require some adjustments. They've got an additional shell, but those adjustments overall aren't that big. Not really. Whilst they seem massive, they don't really change the actual playstyle of the tank. Anyway, I've been Fujit. By all means, let me know your thoughts so far on update 9.1. As I said, I personally haven't seen a massive, massive change. There's some tinkering that's got to go on. We've got to adapt a little bit, but I don't think it's broken anything. Well, not yet. And I played it extensively last night. But I'd like to know your thoughts on this, your views, your opinions, because that's the whole idea of it. I mean, I'm not just here to, to like tell you, listen to me, I'm right, because I'm not right. You know, this is just my view, my opinion, my thoughts, and I want to know yours. So let me know. Anyway, guys, as I said, I've been Fujit. That has been my quick take on update 9.1. By all means, comment and everything below. And until the next time, remember, it's just a game. So stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because really, that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.